Is Germany still committed to Ukraine? A government spokesman has denied that Berlin is turning its back on Kyiv despite budget plans that call for reducing aid to Ukraine by 50 percent next year. Now, the spokesman, Wolfgang Buschner, said reports that Germany was reducing its support for Ukraine were, quote, simply inaccurate. He added that despite plans to cut spending to Ukraine, Chancellor Olaf Scholz is fully committed to backing Kyiv for as long as necessary. All right, I want to bring in now the German lawmaker, Boris Miatovich. He's a member of parliament for the Greens, and he also sits on the defense committee. It's good to have you with us. Let me ask you, we've got a denial from the German government that Berlin will reduce its support for Kyiv, but we have a report that says the budget next year sees a reduction by 50 percent. Do you know what the truth is? Hello, Mr. Goff, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, we will see what the truth is when the parliament decides over the budget. For the moment, I can only warn that we don't gamble with the peace uh, that we all need uh, in Ukraine and that we gamble with the support for Ukraine. There's a very simple analysis of the situation. If Ukraine stops warfare, Ukraine will not uh, longer exist. And if Russia stops warfare, there will be peace. So we are supporting Ukraine as long as it takes. Let's take a look at the numbers. Maybe that can give us some clarity. This year, Germany has earmarked almost 7.5 billion euros for military support for Ukraine. Now, the finance minister, Christian Lindner, he has reportedly only appropriated 4 billion euros for next year. That's what's being reported. Can you confirm that? No, I cannot because I don't been I haven't been in touch with the finance minister and I don't see his ideas as valuable in the discussion. We should talk about supports for I don't know industrial funds for any kind of household position but not gamble with the situation of the Ukraine. Is it? I strongly believe that we need need support and solidarity with Ukraine and we should shouldn't put this at uh, at risk. Are you calling on the Chancellor Olaf Scholz then to come out with a, a clear message now? Because people are listening to what the finance minister has reportedly said, and yeah, there's a lack of clarity now. I can only repeat that uh, we in the parliament finally decide the budget. And I uh, strongly believe that the majority in this parliament will support the solidarity for Ukraine and doesn't support the gambling on the budget. The budget is a problem. Yes, we all know there's 12 billion missing. And yes, we need to find solutions for that. But putting this topic on the table is a mistake and this has to be clarified. So for the parliament, I think it is very clear that we strongly stand with the Ukraine. In a, and for our viewers, Germany's finance minister belongs to a fiscally conservative party that is often at odds with Chancellor Olaf Scholz's Social Democratic Party, as well as your party, the Greens. But he wields a lot of power in this government. Um, is the German government, is it at risk of collapsing over support for Ukraine? I don't think so. I think our finance minister is trying to find ways to get his budget done. This way he has chosen now, or seems to have chosen, is a risk. And this is not supported by our party. And I think most social democrats won't support it too. So it's up to the government to decide if that draft that the finance minister will put or seems to put on the table is something to be really discussed in the parliament. I don't think so. I think we have better options to reduce uh, substitutions in the industry or in other parts as well to get that cut done that is needed for our budget. But our solidarity for Ukraine is not a tax that is uh, necessary in budget debates. Mr. Miatovich, if we look at the, the German public, there are ordinary Germans who are opposed to military support for Ukraine um, for many reasons. Some fear Russia's reaction to Germany's involvement in the war. Others feel the impact of inflation and want this money to be spent on other things. They think the money should be spent on the voters, the German people. What would you say to them? We still need to understand that 
this uh, government is a free party government that is uh, dealing on many subjects very closely. Uh, dealing with the people in Germany is a job that all Democrats in Germany have to do. We have free upcoming elections in our federal states where people are very um, in trouble with the situation you are in. Nobody likes war and nobody likes what is going on in the war. But once again, if Russia stops the war, the war will be over. They started the aggression with 200,000 soldiers and we need to understand that this aggression wouldn't stop if Ukraine surrendered. They would go for more. And this is part of history that we learned that we have to stand together. So this is a difficult situation. I can understand that German people think, well, maybe it's better to hide or to be silent. Maybe the aggression goes over us. But I think it, it is necessary to see the other point. No, this aggression is something we have to condemn internationally, cooperate with our parties in the European Union, cooperate with our partners in the US and the UN Security Council as well. This is something China must be interested in as well. If this war is going on, the world doesn't get a better place for trade, for peace, for development. And if we're all interested in this, we have to work uh, closely, more closely to them. So uh, the German have... people, I can only say, yes, guys, this is difficult, but we have to stand there. And I want to ask you this, because you know you've, you've got some critical regional elections um, coming up um, in just a few weeks' time here. Um, what... Do you say then to the voters who say we simply don't have the money to be investing in military aid for Ukraine? The money is simply not there. The, the money is there. It is put maybe in wrong ballots or in wrong boxes or however you call it in English. But the money is not our issue. The issue is that the Russian influence in Germany is growing. We have disinformation ongoing. We have... Uh, stories, narratives that are ongoing, that are used in the political uh, uh, campaigning very thoroughly. I can only say, if we don't say clearly or condemn this Russian aggression clearly, we are going to have future problems. So this is the moment we have to say, OK, do we let aggression go? No, we don't. We want to work on a world in peace and not in, in war. And this is something we have to stand in these elections as well, yes. Okay, Mr. Boris Miatovich, member of the German Parliament with the Greens, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Go. All the best. All right, let's go to our chief political correspondent, Nina Haas, and maybe she can give us some clarity here. And Nina, is Germany planning to restrict new military aid to Ukraine or not? Who is saying what here? Well, yes, they are, said a media report over the weekend. No, they're not, said the German government today in that press conference. So what's behind all this? The German government is currently putting together its budget for next year, and that's always intense negotiations, but of course, especially so in a time of crisis like the current one. And this year, Germany is spending 8 billion euros on military aid for Ukraine. In the draft that was sent to Parliament on Friday last week, it says that the government is planning to spend 4 billion next year. So that would mean half it. And in addition, there was a letter by the finance minister to the defence and the foreign ministers telling them that no more additional military support would be approved next year. So that, of course, left some to interpret that as a cut in military spending. But the government in a press conference today said again that that was not true and that they're sticking to their promises, that they're placing their hopes instead on another way of financing Ukraine's military needs next year. And here they're talking about what the G7 agreed a few weeks ago that a $50 billion loan would be set up for Ukraine that is based on proceeds from frozen Russian assets. And the problem here is that the details of that fund and when that will become operational are not clear. The government is hoping that that is going to be the case by the end of this year, early next year. And the government uh, did do everything they could to sound hopeful. But of mm. course, we simply do not know. So we're dealing with a situation where there's just lots of room for interpretation, speculation. Yeah, we're dealing with politicians who are dealing with public money. We know that the German government is a staunch supporter of Ukraine. I'm wondering how much backing is there among the general population at the moment? 
Well, East Germans in particular are significantly more critical of arms deliveries to Ukraine than West Germans. Um, we've got a couple of figures here. Um, only 28 percent overall in all of Germany call for a reduction in military aid. That is according to a poll by a public broadcaster ZDF. But it's 45 percent in the East. So they want military aid reduced. 41 percent of respondents in all of Germany are even in favor of more weapons for Ukraine. Um, and the vast majority, 86 percent of Germans, are aware that this war is not coming to an end very soon, that uh, it is not very likely that we'll see negotiations between Russia and Ukraine in the coming months. But the spokesperson today that we saw rejected as, uh, and I quote, infamous, the accusation that the government was deliberately sending mixed signals to Germans mm. regarding military support for Ukraine. Uh, we are talking about an important period for German politics where it's only two weeks and then we'll have very important regional elections in three mm. eastern German states where, of course, support for military aid to Ukraine is not very popular. DW's chief political correspondent Nina Hansel with the latest here in Berlin. Nina, as always, thank you.